You see all those, all those are bed bugs. Feces all over, feces in our kids' toys. I turn on the light and it, it looks like the wall is moving. There's cockroaches everywhere. I feel stuck. I'm Aaron Mendelson, an investigative and data reporter with KPCC and LAist. I spent a year investigating a housing empire in Southern California run by a man named Mike Niger. There's more than 16,000 units of housing, we estimate, across really the entire state of California, all the way from Riverside and San Bernardino up to Sacramento. And this housing can be dirty, dangerous, and deadly. So we've got a really in-depth story online, but for those of you who are uh, pressed for time, we've got some quick takeaways. So this empire of rental housing and all, all these businesses go back to a man named Mike Niger. He's been building this business since the 1970s, buying real estate. Over time, they've amassed uh, just a huge number of parcels in California, thousands and thousands of properties worth, at this point, more than a billion dollars, we estimate. And they specialize in low-income housing, the rougher parts of town, often older buildings. It has enabled them to, to live in a very nice home, a, a mansion. I was very struck by that disparity, you know, the waterfall, luxury aquarium that they have on their own property compared with the conditions that their tenants are living in. There are dirty and dangerous conditions at these buildings. At one trailer park in Pomona, they had a typhus outbreak. This hadn't happened in Los Angeles County for the previous six years. They started driving opossums. They actually took one of these opossums, researchers did, and they counted the number of fleas on it. There were 1,087 fleas on this one opossum. You know, a lot of tenants we spoke to expressed concerns about their safety or the safety of their children at the properties they were living in. This was true whether we were in San Bernardino or, or Los Angeles or elsewhere. And one of the tenants that I interviewed was in fact shot and killed in the parking lot of his own apartment complex. There was a fire at a mobile home community there called 4J's Trailer Park in January 2016. So a five-month-old girl died in this fire. Um, I interviewed the mother of this girl and, and her sister who was also living at the complex. You know, state regulators took a look after this fire and, and, and they came to the determination that Palma management was at fault, that their conduct had led to the death of an infant, as they put it. And so there was a, an effort to crack down and say, this is not acceptable. State real estate regulators tried to strip the real estate license of Mike Niger. That didn't happen, but they took away the real estate license of Niger Realty and one of Mike Niger's longtime business partners. They also criminally charged Palma Management with involuntary manslaughter after this tragedy happened. Um, those charges were dropped. I spoke to a state regulator who said this goes so far beyond what they generally see. They don't usually see dead bodies. And, you know, the, this is just the absolute worst case of what can happen when you have negligence in rental housing. So we have a system that relies on complaints, often from tenants, and if you have tenants who are concerned about being evicted or, or maybe they're not citizens, they're not inclined to make complaints. Low-income tenants might not know that they can make complaints. One thing that makes this reporting really hard to do is that you don't have to say who is making the money from a property. So if you own 10 properties, you could own those properties with 10 different LLCs and your tenants wouldn't know that they all have the same landlord. The government actually doesn't know very much about the rental market. If you go to the government and say, how big is Palma Management? How many units do they manage? There's no answer. There was an effort to create a, a database at the statewide level that would include some of this information last year, but that failed. I talked to a lot of housing experts in the, in the course of working on this story, and one thing that they said is that enforcement in rental housing can be really toothless. So why does all this matter? On the one hand, we saw what happens in the worst case, if you have really dangerous conditions in, in rental housing, someone can die, an infant died. I think it really matters how our neighbors are living and for many middle-class Californians who are themselves struggling with high housing prices, they might not have, have a great idea of what it's like at the bottom of the market. 
how people feel in these places that are just one step above homelessness and having reported in, in several of these complexes, you know, people feel stuck. They feel like they have to put up with these dirty and dangerous conditions. And that's a byproduct of our housing crisis in this state. People don't want to live in complexes with bed bugs and roach infestations, but they feel like they have no other choice. You can check out the full story at las.com. There's also a radio special airing on 89.3 KPCC.